Bapis, it's a humanoid. Mind control, see if you can move around with it. Oh, no. Come on, dude. Yeah, can you mind oh, control? Oh, I definitely knock can. Knock the boss around. Yeah, knock no. the boss around. He's <laughs> coming. He's 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 coming. Ladies and gentlemen, we are returning to Castle Nathria, and we have four bosses for you. Uh, we had some extra testing going on this week, and we're going to do them, not in testing order, but in dungeon journal order, so you should get a general idea of how Blizzard's may be proposing the difficulty curve uh, going through the raid. I am, of course, joined by Mr. Finn, who was there with the testing alongside me, playing some Monk, I saw. I was. I played Monk on all of these, actually. Monk's bad. I heard that. I heard that. Monk is terrible, Let's, your thoughts. Yeah, we spread that rumour so that it doesn't get nerfed. <laughs> you know what it is, and I think this is a good comment for the guys, because one of the co most common questions we get during raid testing is, what looks good? Guys, listen, there are so many frigging combinations of stuff for individual specs right now that there is no way we could tell you, because yeah. I know for a fact... Uh, Finn was popping off on his Windwalker in our raid testing. And then, ironically, like purely out of coincidence, I switched over to Limit Stream as we were wrapping up our testing to see how they were getting on. Uh, and they, their Windwalker was doing like no damage. Uh, they were like, and at that time, Max literally said, Hey, what's up with Windwalker? And their Windwalker, who hadn't done the same combo as you, was like, They just don't do any damage. And I was looking at, our, at you and I was like, Well, they do do damage. And that's what's happening is there are like four not only four covenant abilities finn there are then three, 12 soul binds with 36 variations of path you can take with all conduits on top of those variations and then legendaries on top of those blizzard is so such a hard place for them right now to try and sort this out there are literally like hundreds of possible combinations of stuff for just a spec, not a class, a spec, Finn. Yeah. And that is showing so much in raid testing. And often, one or two of those things does damage. Like, the yes. Hunter's probably the most extreme example of that right now, where, like, all your yeah. all your damage is the tar trap Lego, and you just sort of build well, he, around that, right? Like, <laughs> the irony is in here, you'll probably see me top of the DPS regularly. I'm literally just a tar trap dropper. That's <laughs> all I have. I didn't, I've not raided on BM ever. Uh, like, before this raid test, I was like, oh my god. Like, this is so dumb. But regardless of that, let's get into these bosses. And the first boss I'm about to bring you, ladies and gentlemen, is Shriekwing. Shriek wing fin he dangles from the ceiling this very large bat and in the dungeon journal the first boss in the raid this is our opener initial thoughts on this one uh it's it better be the first boss because it's kind of dull to be honest it does say it's the first boss this is kind of a theme guys that you're gonna see throughout castle nathria is this boss is about one gimmick and the fact that the boss even has a health bar is just to give time to get to that gimmick that's it. Yep. <laughs> like, this boss does so little besides it's one thing that they thought of. And gimmicks are kind of a theme that we're spotting. A little different than our first raid test videos. Obviously, we'd only seen a couple of bosses there. Now we've seen eight out of ten of the bosses. Yeah, that still seems to be the, uh, the road we're going down. So, Shriekwing uh, is this large bat, and it does do some stuff. Uh, it does a sonar screech thing that uh, makes you drop blood on the floor. And you can line of sight it. So you go and hide behind a pillar and you all drop blood on the floor. Yeah. It then does this really weird mechanic thing. And I couldn't figure out what the hell Blizzard was thinking with this. Is it uh, randomly applies or it applies a debuff to you that reduces the healing you take. But static, the pools that you just dropped gets rid of the debuff. And the pools don't do any damage. I, I didn't get what this was supposed to be. Like, I, I, even if they turned those pools up to do extreme damage, it's still not a problem to just die. It's better to dive in, take the damage, and be, be able to be healed than to just not be able to be healed. Yeah. It, um, it was really weird. It, it felt like the pools were either way, way low on scaling, or that mechanic just doesn't really make any sense because you just stood in the pools the whole time. 
it, it didn't matter. Uh, yeah, I was playing well. I was being a good boy and only stepping in to clear my debuffs. But, I was just standing uh, in the I know, I, I, Yeah, I found out later that everybody was like, I'm just standing in a pool. Uh, I could see on Mythic that maybe they'll keep this so you can't do that and they'll just be able, you won't be able to be healed by the end of the fight or something like that. Uh, but as it stands, and this is kind of a trend we're going to see in a few bosses here, guys, on Heroic, nothing nothing kills you. <laughs> like, it's so hard to wipe on this boss. Besides the one gimmick, should we get to the, the big gimmick? That's not the gimmick. Uh, the gimmick is, when Shriekring reaches full energy, the new phase starts. Shriekring takes no damage, or 99% reduced damage, and you have to hide from Shriekring. This is what this fight is all about. The rest of the fight is just to get to this point. And Shriekwing will land in the middle of the room. And then, because Shriekwing is blind, uh, Shriekwing will wander around the room and try to see you. And you have to hide behind pillars. Yeah. Until the phase is over. That's the gimmick. That's the thing. Yeah, if you go within 16 yards, I think it is, of her, you just die. So you just have to run yes. constantly. And then there's little, like... Uh, is it Elisand from the Nighthold that had like the little orbs that would bounce around? Yeah, the room? attenuation yeah. from Heart of Fear, same sort of thing. It's like, they're sound waves, is what they're supposed to. Yeah, be. much smaller versions of those, but they move pretty quickly. They're not, they're not easy to dodge. You couldn't like full AFK, but if you got hit by one, the chain that sort of happened from it was kind of ridiculous. So, I got hit by one of the sonars, got stunned. She jumps on you, does damage. But then you're within eight, like 15, 16 yards of her, and there's no quick way of getting out, so she just killed you. Which was a bit strange. Yeah, and it drops a shade. So it's really a case of, the like I said, this is the entire gimmick of the fight. If one person gets seen by Shriekwing, they get attacked and stunned. But they then leave a shade of Shriekwing behind. And if then you have to line of sight that one as well. So it chain reacts very, very heavily. Uh, because now there's multiple points. Shriekwing is obviously moving around the room, uh, and now you've got shades, which can also see or hear people, is the idea. Uh, and therefore, you are... You, they, if you get seen by those ones, they also drop shades, and it chain reacts very, very quickly. So, un unquestionably, the game plan is nobody should get seen. You just stand behind a pillar. Uh, sadly, though... <laughs> This seemed impossible for our guild. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I would actually put that down to lag more than anything. US lag, I hope and pray. Uh, because we do have to play on US servers. I mean, I was stood behind a pillar and I was fine. Uh, but I definitely saw some people just get hit by it and it chain reacts into something else. And after this, the fight just goes back to normal and you just do the same thing again. Uh, so this is that is the entire Shriekwing fight. Uh, is... You DPS Shriekwing until the energy bar fills. When energy bar is full, you then do the, the hide from Shriekwing thing. And then you just do it again. Other than that, not much happening. Kind of uh, a first boss. And I don't know how you feel about this, Finn. But first bosses always seem to get a, a buy in terms of their complexity to get started. As yeah. if WoW is a new game every single expansion. I do understand the argument for it, but it's not particularly interesting. Uh, like, compared to Talok... For example, Talok is easy as well, but what a super interesting fight. You know, we had the elevator, we're going down, there's loads of going on. We've got to go from a small room to a big room. Uh, for an opening fight, this is kind of not it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> this is I, not my jam. I generally don't like line of sight mechanics. Um, mm. I don't think it's particularly fun trying to kill a boss when you have to hide around the corner from it quite often. Um, <laughs> and you really have to do that here. It felt like it happened a lot. And... I mean, the obvious thing would be you would tank her relatively close to a pillar and then you would just run around the pillar, right? But yep. she does have an ability that like bounces echo waves off stuff. So it sends yep. out little circles and they hit pillars and walls and bounce back. And it was really difficult to deal with as melee if you stood next to something because it just bounced in random yep. directions and hit everyone. So As a hunter, no problem at all. Yeah, as a hunter, I imagine it was great. As melee, not that much fun. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, not that much fun. I just think line of sight mechanics are like not really that interesting and probably not that difficult to create. It's kind of a lazy mechanic, in my opinion. I mean, it just takes you out of the fight. Like, uh, it's it feels like a way of hiding an intermission phase. And as I said, there's a couple of war bosses that have intermission phases like this, mm -hmm. uh, where you just kind of stood around. Uh, so that's Shriekwing, guys. But on top of that, if you ever liked Beast Lord Darmak. 
Beast Lord Darmok is back, but this time it is in the form of Huntsman Ultimore. Your deaths will not be as quick. The hunt begins. Huntsman Ultimore. Finn, this boss is a fucking mess. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> this boss is such a mess. Oh my god! I don't know if they've done uh, I it don't... intentionally or not, but the room, the room, kind of makes the boss a little trivial, shall we say? I think they've. I, th- I, I, if all the bosses we're talking about today, this is the one I think is going to change the most from this preview we're about to show. Yeah. You because god damn, does this boss have so many weird issues going on with it? Um, Huntsman Ultimore Finn, uh, tell us about it. I mean, it's pretty much boss plus ad. The ad uh, does, like, basically nothing that I cared about, which is a bit weird. <laughs> I, I was playing melee on this, and literally I just cleaved the whole time and didn't give a shit what was going on. Um, yeah. Yeah, the only relatively interesting part of the fight is when shades yeah. spawn. So there's, like, essentially the, the boss has three ads. They all do different things. The first one... I'd, bears. Bears. It's very important yeah. to point out that there are three different bears. The first bear... Genuinely couldn't tell you what it did. Didn't care. Just killed it, right? The second bear spawns a couple of ads alongside it, which have some cool CC interactions, which is like the only Mm. bit of the fight that I thought was kind of interesting. So it spawns two ads that essentially like channel this huge cast and they gain energy as well, right? So if the cast goes off, it pulses huge damage on the raid. If they gain full energy, it's pretty much a wipe. But you can hard CC them. So you can put Hunter Trap on them, you can Hex them, you can um, do pretty much anything to them. Like you random can scare stuns. Beast them, which was my contribution yeah. to our progress here. I was like, oh, I have Scare Beast, and I wonder if that works. It totally works. It's actually kind of cool, because also when they get CC applied to them, they get 100% damage increase debuff that stacks. And yep. we couldn't see a limit on that debuff either. So It did, was unlimited, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, so if you Hex them... It just continuously stacked up. And if, if you hexed and hunter trapped it, it stacked up even faster. So. W- and if you sheeped it on top of that, it stacked up even yeah, faster. Yeah, so we just had this yeah. crazy stack on the ads to the extent that I'm pretty sure I had like a Fist of Fury that hit for like 90,000. And. I think one of our mages one shot them. Yeah. Uh, so they did nothing. You CC'd them, and then when the. Uh, we should point out here, we were doing it wrong, and you might see this in a lot of footage, is that. Uh, once on the first pull, I was like, "Oh, scare beast works." And what we thought what was the deal with these is that every CC you apply added another stack. Yep. So in in some of the clips, you're gonna see me literally stood there spamming scare beast. That's it. I didn't do damage. I just spammed scare beast onto the onto the target, uh, so that it kept getting more stacks because that's how we thought it worked. And we were like, oh, "Okay," and also throw blinds at it. Throw and then so I'd be doing like scare beast into intimidate, scare beast into frost trap. And just throwing loads of CC at them while they were being cleaved. Because that's what we thought made sense. Keep them on top of the boss. They share health with the main ad. And just keep stacking up the damage buff so they'll gradually die. And then towards the end of testing, we were like, something weird's happening here. Because what we also found out is that some of the stuff that does damage, like spread shot. uh, The Huntsman will just shoot like a shotgun blast and it does a lot of damage. Uh, For science, we were like, I wonder if this is affected by line of sight. Because there's some the the room is weirdly shaped, like Finn pointed out. So we <laughs> we went full Cremagus Blackwing Lair strats and hid behind a wall and just left the boss and a tank who uh, the boss couldn't kill our DK on his own, like without a healer. <laughs> I just left him there and we stood behind a wall and yep, a hundred percent nullified like all the damage the boss did to the raid. Yep. Uh, so we basically just stood with a boss that did uh, an ad that did nothing. And just killed it. Um, but once we discovered something weird was happening with the stacks, we were like, wait, 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 wait. Stop cleaving them. Let's just throw CC at them and leave them CC'd. So we actually dragged them away. I think we used like a ring of peace to just knock them somewhere. And then just sheep them. Frost, uh, put a, like, like Finn just said, we hexed on top of sheep, on top of frost trap. LOL, this debuff is not only stacking incredibly fast, but they're actually doing nothing. Uh, because they're fully CC'd. And then later on, we just were like, okay, now kill them and just two-shot them. It was like, what is this? What is this mechanic? Like, what's supposed to be happening here? I'm so confused. Yeah, I don't really know what this boss is even supposed to do after testing it. Um, the only thing that was pretty clear to me was the third bear is like a tank bear. It's like a 
you entirely deal with it with like one tank basically because every time he melees he gains a stack of like additional melee damage but it, yeah. but it also slows his movement speed so you let the tank lets him hit him a few times until his movement speed's really slow and then runs away to reset the debuff but as the mm -hmm. ad chases the tank it pulses aoe on the raid that was really yeah. the only mechanic that i understood what it was meant to do the rest of them were like i don't know why these ads are here we basically one shot them <laughs> the first bear yeah. literally does nothing and the boss can be line of sighted behind a pillar for the whole fight so well, we had a brewmaster as well so based on what finn just said is that yeah you, you, the idea is that the the the, the last bear gains melee damage until you start, uh, and then the tank's supposed to kite a little bit, which drains its stacks, but AoE's the raid. But because we had a brewmaster, we were like, just just do laps around the room and see what happens. Totally worked. Uh, he just did no damage, yep. and he just ran laps around the room, and he had, had no stacks left, so it couldn't AoE the raid. Uh, so he was like, oh, okay, this, this is kind of dumb. And he mixed in some... Um, leaps gateways things like that and you can do that for a really really long time and because the the actual main boss the huntsman himself just chills and doesn't do anything you could just flat out dps him instead so i i, I think this boss is going to change so much because it's really dumb nothing he does makes sense but it is uh, another note here finn uh, in fact we should have said this about shriekwing as well uh, mechanics we're missing here which are almost universally shared across every single boss is somebody is marked with debuff, you have to run out of the group. Shriekwing does the same thing and leaps on someone. Yep. Huntsman does the same thing. You are marked with debuff. Go and stand outside of the group. And nearly every single boss in Castle Nathria shares that mechanic on top of a number of other mechanics. This one also involves a bleed. Uh, bleeds are very popular. I know some people were like, of course there's bleeds. It's a vampire. Uh, it's a vampire raid. I'm like, yeah, not everything we fight is a vampire though, and they're still putting bleeds in. There's bleeds everywhere. Uh, Yep. There are bleeds everywhere. Your Kyrian potion is going to come in big uh, in this situation because it clears the bleeds. Uh, so there's a great deal of those scenarios that are happening uh, here. I'm not talking about these mechanics because honestly, guys, they're so boring. And they're the same all the time. Like, after this tier, you guys will be going to be so good at moving out of the group with a debuff. Like, so fucking good. Do you have <laughs> an arrow over amazing. your head? In which case, go stand somewhere else. That is, Go stand somewhere else. It's like yeah. four <laughs> bosses so far all have the same red arrow appearing above your head, and they and they all require you to move out of the group and then move back in once the arrow's gone. That's it. <laughs> that is uh, not even a lie. <laughs> it's not even a lie. Uh, so that is the Huntsman. I wouldn't put too much faith in that one. It's probably going to change quite a lot. Uh, so we're going to move on to a fight I was genuinely excited for, and good God was I disappointed. Uh, it is the Council <laughs> of Blood. Prepare yourself for defeat. Fall to my blade! Finn, the Council of Blood, a.k.a. the Dance Boss, a.k.a. Shimmy to the left, yeah. Rants to forwards. A Council Boss, though, where it... We killed this. I, I should point out that during our raid testing, I don't know what's happening with Blizzard's tuning. All these bosses were ludicrously easy. Uh, we killed them, or could have killed them. We don't actually kill bosses on the test realm. That's not our purpose. Uh, but we easily wiped the floor with these bosses within 20 minutes, for the most part, of getting into these bosses. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, the council has optional ways of killing it, because there are three members of the council, and you obviously get a choice of the order you want to kill them in. Uh, we killed them in all three orders within the first half an hour. Like, it was kind of dumb. Um, tell me about the dance, Finn. The cha-cha slide. The cha-cha slide um, slash shriekwing phase slash why is this even here? Yeah, I, th <laughs> that, I, that I thought it would be more fun than this, if I'm honest. I did. But, so, yeah, basically, at a certain HP on the whatever boss you've decided to kill because they don't share a health pool, they will leave the room, basically, and a spotlight will appear. Only for you. You need to run into that spotlight and you'll be given four buttons and it's essentially move left right forward and back and then you'll be given mm -hmm. four instructions randomly now if you mess this up which i did you're not very you're just not paying attention it's so easy i've, I've never it's I so it simple you know, do you know why i messed it up finn it's actually easy because all the buttons look the same there's like barely any distinguishing features the arrows are in a different direction but they're the same color on color 
uh, it's easier just to click this. Like I was, because yeah. I have, I don't have one, two, three, four bound as one, two, three, four on my keyboard. And it does change your, uh, it's not uh, your arrow keys or WASD that are forward, left, backwards and right. Uh, it's actually your one, two, three, four keys. So I was just, uh, I did the first one I did. I was like, okay, so it goes left. I think it's forwards, backwards. So it's like, for me, it's like one, two, three and a mouse button. Uh, and I was like, oh, my brain's just not clicking with this immediately. And so the next one, I just clicked them. And I was like, okay, yeah, you just click this. It's yeah, like, it's much easier. So, yeah. So easy. Yeah. Um, it's like a dumber version of, me of uh, Mecha Torque. Like, Mecha Torque was actually kind of difficult because you required some coordination, but this was just... This is pointless. It's just like... And the Jade Fire Masters. We've had similar versions of this. True, yeah, Jade Fire. It's been well. good. Yeah, Jade Fire gave you a massive damage buff, and it was kind of cool to get it right because you came down, you popped coolies, you went into it. The, uh, the, the, the repercussions for this also are kind of dumb. Uh, it's that if you don't get into the spotlight in your very specific position within the dance floor, you die. It just kills you. Yep. Uh, which actually doesn't work with some of the mechanics right now. <laughs> which is, we'll get to in a sec. Uh, so that, you kind of be screwed by that. Uh, but if you actually fail the dance, you just get stunned for 30 seconds. That's it. Yeah. Like. <laughs> but mechanics spawn on you and stuff. And you're like untargetable by healers. So you, you kind of die. At the moment, anyway, because enough stuff spawned on me during my 30 second stun that I was dead anyway. Um, oh, not me. Which oh, it's fine. It's kind of frustrating. Oh, I must have gone really unlucky. <laughs> um, I think so. A lot of people got stunned and we very few people died to this. I think that you must have got unlucky on that. To I be was getting splashed all over the place. But yeah, yeah. it's it needs something else for this. It needs to be a little bit more. You don't even dance. Yeah, That's you don't the even dance. Part. You, you, do your, you don't even dance. You do your character's normal dance. Instead of, like, when you go to the left. Because it would kind of look cool if the entire raid did slide to the left. And they did something forward, right? Like, the animators could have some fun with that. But they haven't. And maybe they will in the final version. But as it stands right now, you just do your racial dance. That's it. So, it, <laughs> that's all you do. All the raids just stood there doing this dance. And you're like, what is going on? Why are we doing this? It, uh, is, is it supposed to be silly? Because it's kind of not. It's kind of just dumb. Uh, it's just a weird... It, I was so looking forward to this. I was kind of thinking, this is going to look really funny. We're going to have a blast with it. Uh, and then we actually did it. And I was like, oh, oh no. <laughs> kind of yeah, I thought it was going to be much more yeah. fun. Uh, but let's go into the other mechanics then. Because as we said, you can kill them in any order. Mm -hmm. And the way this works is as one dies, it empowers the other two with new abilities. And then when you kill the second one, the last one gains like an ultimate ability. Uh, and they're all very different. Unfortunately, the way this was tuned is it was actually harder when all three were alive rather than what I think is supposed to happen is it gets harder as each of them dies. Yep. So the actual opening of the fight was more difficult than later on in the fight. Um, but we have various mechanics here, including ba -ba -da -ba, moving out with debuff, uh, <laughs> which is uh, yep. awesome. Um, and there's also soak with debuff, uh, which is going to be a very regular thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably seeing these vampires dance across the dance floor, Finn, that uh, just stun you for like a global cooldown. Yeah. I don't really know what they're meant to do. To be honest, I stopped caring about walking into them. I was just taking them. I didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was BM, so I was just dancing around them for whatever reason. Like, yeah. I, one thing, it was very strange. Um, you will have a mechanic called Scarlet Letter, uh, which picks a random person and throws them. And this is the thing that really annoyed me. Mm -hmm. It throws them to either the very north of the room or the very south of the room but the dance stuff that has to happen always occurs on the north of the room and so if and you have to go and help soak the damage that guy's about to take so you get ported to one side of the room your friends have to come and help soak it um or you die and then if that happens during the dance which you can control because they go into the dance at 50 percent, so you can say wait until the next scarlet letter before doing it not saying it, you know you can't do that and that might be what blizzard's intending here uh, but if you do go and do that mechanic, uh, you can't get back in... It's impossible to get back in time without extreme mobility and yep. gateways or whatever to get into the dance and you just die. Or oh, several of you die because you helped soak that person. Yeah, the That's overlap's really not that fun. No, it's not. Um, I guess we should talk a little bit more about the ultimate abilities. So there's a frontal cleave that has to be shared uh, with the tank. So the melee, just do that. Yep. Um, 
if you leave one of them till the end, a load of waiters coming, because it is supposed to be a like a party. Yeah. Uh, that you're, <laughs> uh, you're supposed to be a party. Uh, that throw food at you. <laughs> I think that's supposed to do a lot of damage. Right now, it doesn't do anything. Yeah, it wasn't. And skilled. they're also entirely CCable. Yeah. Uh, another one has a lot of the dancing vampires that you see going across the room. They actually come in and start dancing randomly because you'll see through the video they kind of just go left to right. Uh, but if you leave one of these guys up until the end, those waiters become random. However, they're also completely CCable, Finn. And as we discovered, <laughs> and they can be mind controlled yes, by a priest. And then the priest can run over your can run over your whole raid and stun everyone. So good. <laughs> yeah. That was the most entertaining part of this fight. Was our priest going, Oh, I can mind control them. <laughs> and then he just charged it immediately into the rest of the raid and it stunned everybody. Yeah. Uh, but their AI is broken. For some reason, these randomly dancing vampires randomly danced away from the raid. So it did nothing. Yeah, they just stayed at the uh, edge so of the room and didn't really do anything at all. <laughs> Pointless. <laughs> It was so bizarre. Uh, it really was so bizarre. So again, another fight I think is probably going to be dramatically changed. These fights feel really unfinished. Like there's some clearly obvious problems. Uh, we did talk about moving out with Debo Finn and another popular mechanic in Castle Nathria is being chained together. Yeah. Uh, this fight does appear again to chain us together. They really like their chains, these vampires. Yeah. The funny thing is this chain, it lasts for like 10 seconds and you have to move the whole time that you're chained. Otherwise you, you take a ton of damage. So, good mm. luck, casters. That's going to be fun. Uh, yeah, again, for me, it was fine. I actually felt really good. I told you I'm thinking of going Hunter this expansion. And one of the reasons was I was able to deal with all these mechanics. Like, if I got paired with a melee or whatever, or arranged, so much easier. Like, I was helping, you know, help those guys out uh, without it being a problem. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to do much uh, casting during this debuff, though. If you're... Uh, no. It might be a BM rather than an MM kind of fight for the Hunter, then. Uh, I think so too. Yeah. I think so too. It's uh, it's an odd one because again, it shares a lot of mechanics that we've already seen with Sludge Fist and we've seen with uh, Shriekwing and with Huntsman Ultimore. Uh, all these mechanics are similar with slight twists. So it's move out with debuff, you're chained together. But the, like on Sludge Fist, you're chained together, don't separate. On this fight, it's chained together, keep moving. There's another fight coming where you're also chained together. Uh, and do something slightly different, and of course move out with debuff, which <laughs> anything else to say on the Council of Blood, Mr. Finn? No, I think yeah, like you say, it's really unfinished. If anything, they're meant to gain mechanics as we you kill them, but they were actually losing them, so I don't think it had an accurate representation of the fight, but uh, yeah, no, I don't. there's not that much interest in it from what we'd see. What would you suggest they do for the dance, Finn? Because the dance right now is so utterly pointless, and it's obviously something they're kind of big on. This is the gimmick. This is like the Shriek Wing sonar thing. Uh, this is the thing for this fight. It's a full pause of the fight. Like, the bosses retreat, you can't DPS them, and then we go into this dance. Yeah. But as it stands right now, it doesn't do anything. I thought you'd actually get to move your character mm. rather than just pressing 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, but I don't know how they would do it. I, I just really don't think this is... Um, maybe it's like a fun RP intermission, but from a raid mechanic, it's going to be super frustrating on Mythic if you lose two or three people to this, and that's a wipe. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how they salvage that one, if I'm honest. No, it feels like an idea that's started well and it kind of hasn't got there. Um, I'm, I, I'm actually, while we're talking, I have like the footage in front of me. I'm just watching it, I'm like... I don't get it. It's not fun. It's not silly. In fact, we made it silly because one of our guys was playing music over Compass while we did. Yep. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> he AFK'd out to get that music, uh, but that's it. Uh, let's go on to boss number four, Finn. This is the second to last boss, the penultimate boss in the dungeon. It is the Stone Legion Generals. Yes. The master must be stopped. Ravengrift must be restored. Finn, the Stone Legion Generals. This is the penultimate boss. This is the one before we reach the Master Sire Denathrius. Tell me about the Stone Legion Generals. I mean, you're going to be really surprised, right? But <laughs> but you, what you do on this boss is you stack them up and you cleave them. And then one of you will get a mechanic that you need to run out of the raid and drop a circle. So that's new and exciting. <laughs> 
and then two people will also get a thing that you need to run out of the raid and stand so that a glaive like bounces between you and you don't hit anyone else and then there's circles on the ground you dodge out of them that's that, oh, bleeds. that that's it right there's some bleeds obviously because <laughs> carrying potions a thing um yeah i was really underwhelmed by this one don't know if you can tell <laughs> I, God, this fight I fucking hated this fight. This fight is terrible. I'm so bored. This fight is so bad. I was so. It is like it's so boring. Like I had, I can forgive Shriekwing for being a little boring. All right, I get it. It's the first boss of the new tier. Fine. This is the second to last boss, and we still have nothing interesting happening. We still have arrow over. In fact, the the big twist here is one of the arrows is yellow. Yeah. The other arrow is red. So yellow arrow, run out and drop uh, like an earthquake thing. Red arrow, go the other direction and have the glaive fire at you. Uh, and don't hit anyone else in between. So you just have the bosses. If you get yellow arrow, run to the right and drop it. If you get red arrow, run to the left and drop it. And come back to the raid and continue to cleave. Yeah. Um, that's the a huge portion of the fight while you're dealing with these two bosses. And there are a couple of extra things. We've got a knockback on the tanks, which is avoidable. It's a frontal. So you stand slightly to the left. Um... I got hit by that. He a lot. stacks a bleed up. Yeah, the bleed. Yeah, the, the bleed's just like any oh. mechanic you take from the general cal just applies a bleed to you, and then one person gets targeted to be like turned into stone, so you can run into their circle and get turned into stone with them, and it removes your bleed, mm -hmm. but you need to be like freed by DPS basically. Um, yeah, it's, you're not my control. You're just kind of stunned, but DPS yeah. because you turn into a stone block. It's, idea. Bleeds are boring. Please don't make me deal with oh, bleeds yeah. on every fight. They're so dull. Standing in things to yeah. remove the bleed is another one that's like across the whole of this raid. It's like, oh, you have you have a bleed on you. Go stand in this circle, and then the bleed disappears. It's like, um, well, this is kind of what I was talking about uh, in on Twitter, which was very vague, and obviously we can cover it here. It's like these guys have the, every so many things in this raid just have the same principle, and it's and also it's kind of the problem. You know, when we had the interview with Morgan Day. Uh, and we brought up, it's like, okay, the, the Covenant stuff, how are you going to work that into the raids so that, it, like, Fleshcraft isn't useless? Because you can't design a raid around everybody having Fleshcraft. Ergo, Fleshcraft is going to be particularly good because, you know, you don't need it. It's as simple as that. Um, and they were like, oh, well, you know, we'll design fights so that sometimes being X is going to be better and sometimes going to be Y is going to be better. And we have this in the interview field. It's like, well... I'm not sure how that works with something like Fleshcraft unless you really shoehorn in. Look at this very niche thing that we haven't really done before, but it works really, really well with that covenant. Aha! Uh -huh. And so they've kind of done that with the bleeds. And I know people are going to say, yeah, but do you need to be Kyrian? And that's actually our point. No, you don't. But the only way they've been able to like say, well, if you're not using the Kyrian potion or whatever... You can turn to stone, or you stand You stand in the stone circle, or you stand in the blood circle, or you stand in X circle to get rid of the bleed, because we can't account for everybody being Kyrian. Ergo, it's just like... <sighs> it's so dull. Yeah, it's really boring. I, 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 don't get, I don't get why they've... Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of things with Necrolord Shield in here as well, like the if you've got the Soulbind that makes you immune to CC... You can run in and remove your bleed, but not be turned to stone. And it's like, yep. is is that as useful as my ability is, ever? So it's going to be that one. Mechanic well, no, on because the it takes boss. three seconds to get DPS out, right? It's like you've really. I I, I genuinely feel like looking at these bosses, Finn. Uh, I should go. Let's finish this boss before we go into our sort of conclusion here. Uh, there is another intermission phase. Da -ba -da -ba. <laughs> There's another intermission phase. Uh, and this time you are protecting uh, two of the Revendreth Soulbinds that are at the back of the room. And uh, during the intermission, uh, you have to kill an ad and also uh, pick up red orbs and drop them off uh, that refill the mana of one of the Soulbinds. And once that's done, he does a knockback, so you have to stand near him. Otherwise, you get knocked off the platform, which is kind of funny. We weren't expecting it the first time and everyone went bye-bye. Uh, and then you go back to doing phase one. That's the that's this one's Shriek Wing intermission phase. That's this one's Dance intermission phase. That's this one's Hungering Destroyer intermission phase. Uh, you see where we're going with this is so many of these bosses have these like weird downtime periods that are trying to be interesting, but they're kind of not. Um, 
you're just doing you're doing something that's not that particularly interesting. I'm not trying to besmirch the raid, but you guys can see in the footage that it is kind of you're getting where we're coming from. Um, certainly, people can look back to our previous raid uh, testing videos and how excited we were, particularly about heroic. Heroic is typically where the real fun encounters are. They're not too hard. They're usually doing something kind of cool, and they're not normal mode easy, right? So heroic is usually really good, but mm. damn, this has been uh, this has been a disappointing raid test so far. Uh, and it really does feel like they thought, hmm, we need to put stuff in that makes the Covenants go, haha, I chose Kyrian, this really helps out. Haha, I chose Necrolord. Thank God, they said Fleshcraft was shit, but look at me now. And then tried to build bosses on after that. Yeah. And it feels like they haven't had the creative freedom fin to go, make something cool in a vampire castle. Yeah. And then work from there onwards, you know, with the freedom to do that. I feel like they haven't had that this time. Someone in the meetings then being like, do you know what players love? They love intermissions where you stand around and don't do anything. Uh, I mean, on my monk, I think there's plenty of footage on this boss, like the intermission. There's like two red orbs that drop at once. There's like 20 people. Neither of the bosses take damage. I was just standing healing myself in a corner. <laughs> it was so dull. <laughs> That's so bored. Yeah. <laughs> I was doing the opposite. I was like, please, God, give me an orb so I can end this phase. I hope there's a. <laughs> like, that's all I was doing. Yeah, I hope there's a good series on Netflix when we're progressing this. That's all I'm saying. A little bit, yeah. I don't know what's happening. We still have two bosses to go, though, so maybe that'll swing it around. This isn't all doom and gloom. We have Artificer Zymox, uh, who's coming up, and hilariously, his dungeon journal is in French. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, don't know what's happening. Uh, and also, of course, the last boss, Syed and Athreus. And usually we get the last boss in Heroic after Mythic testing has started. So, uh, we'll have to wait and see. But we do know that this last boss, Syed and Athreus, uh, is going to be Blackhand style. We heard that from Morgan. And we uh, some people have managed to find a way into the room and have released videos on it. Uh, we've seen that it has multiple floors, multiple things like that, uh, that we will get to play with and potentially the last boss can kind of rescue this for me uh but so far not been impressed finn no no there's probably one boss i like so far that's about it oh can i guess because i bet it's the same as mine yeah uh, i'm gonna say it's lady Inerva dark correct King. yes yeah and you know why a lot of variety it's nothing like the other boss i didn't have to stand afk at any point in that fight which was a benefit big <laughs> huge benefit for me <laughs> <laughs> on a plus one. <laughs> There's no point where I was really AFK. I actually don't mind the Kale fast fight either. Um, yeah, true, actually. Uh, true. Yeah, Kale and Dark Vein have definitely been the standouts. Uh, but for everything else, uh, it's literally Shriekwing. Move out with debuff, uh, intermission phase where you stand behind a pillar for 30 seconds and then start the fight again. Huntsman. I'm, I'm just not even sure what's supposed to be happening on that fight, really. It feels like a trash mob. Uh, maybe they'll ch change a lot there. I hope they do. Yeah. Hungering Destroyer, move out with debuff again. Uh, share debuff again. And then collect orbs. We're going to collect orbs a few times during this. Sun King Salvation, pretty good fight, actually. A lot going on with Kale. Uh, that's the healer fight, although it's kind of DPS healer fight if you've seen our video on it. Uh, Inerva, great fight. Loads going on. Constantly evolving fight. Really like the mechanics there. Everyone has stuff Council to do. Of Blood. It's awesome. Yep. Everybody has something to do there. Uh, Council of Blood, move out with debuff, get chained together. I should have said earlier, of course. Hungry and Destroyer, and uh, not Hungry Destroyer, Sludge Fist. Oh, we're getting there in a second. Uh, Council of Blood, chained together, move out with debuff. Again, uh, pfft, Sludge Fist, chained together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, chained together, uh, move out with uh, Charge this time, DPS. Stone Legion Generals, two things to move out of with debuff, and then rejoin the cleave. And again, share, remove, bleed, similar to other fights. And then, of course, it goes to Sired and Atreus. Um, how do you feel about the environment so far, Finn? Because I was kind of on the the downside of the environment on the first one. Only in Urba Dark Vein has had an interesting room so far to me. And it's this raid testing actually kind of uh, didn't help that at all. We were in just either large grey room or small grey oh, room. Oh, the Council of Blood room is amazing. I loved that room. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. And the... It's a little subtle thing, I think, but the Stone Legion generals, there's like a big blood window behind you and it projects mm -hmm. on the ground. And I really like that. Um, oh, I didn't even notice it. So maybe I'm just being a moron there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I definitely like the rooms. I don't like the bosses in the rooms, but the rooms are nice. <sighs> Fair enough, fair enough. Hopefully we'll get some good exploration coming up. So thank you so much for listening, guys. That is everything there. 
two more bosses to go till we have a full scope of Castle Nathrian, and we'll sure be back to give our complete thoughts, because this could 180 as always. Always worth remembering. We could completely 180 if the last couple of bosses really add that spice and variety to the dungeon. We'll see. Thank you, Mr. Finn, for your time. Anytime. And we'll see you again, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.